Welcome to The Bottom Line Live. Tonight, we're gonna talk about how to make bookkeeping simple. I think I need a catchphrase like, make bookkeeping simple again, because I feel like it gets really complicated. So I'm gonna go over that with you guys. I'm gonna give you a few very simple things that you either can do to change what you're doing, so that it's simple or maybe things you're already doing and then you can be like, yeah, I knew that was the best way to do it. Um, okay, I'm gonna share this as I, as I do every week because this is going into the Wealth Dynamics Nation group. And then Jerry or Nano will like approve it for it for me. The bottom line live. Um, good. So I know we talked about this, or I, I gave you guys, a, I sent out my little promo, or you know, Jerry sent it out for me because, because he's awesome like that. And we do these webinars for his um, clients. I mean, obviously, if you are a client of mine, you get the webinar as well. Or even if you're a friend of mine, because it's on my Facebook page. But it goes definitely into the Wealth Dynamics group. And that is the main place that you see it. So now, without further ado, let's talk about this. Hi, Lexi. Thanks so much for joining. I feel like Lexi, this is not Jerry's Lexi, by the way. This is my Lexi. I have a Lexi that works for me again as well. So Lexi is just a great name. Lexi should give us tips. She does all of my onboarding for new clients and new employees. We're gonna have you do a, a webinar with me one day, Lexi, where you're gonna explain how to make the onboarding easy and all the things that you do, but not yet, don't worry. Um, good, and I really wanna thank you all for watching. I know I have um, a small fan base that's getting bigger that watches me every Thursday at 7 p.m. for the Bottom Line Live and wants to hear all about bookkeeping, all the new things, so, I um, I want to say thank you to all of you. I'm very appreciative. And for everyone that watches it, uh, not live, that watches it on the YouTube page or anything like that, I appreciate you guys as well. Feel free to come watch me live because then you can send me questions and I will answer them live on camera and you can try to throw me off and try to find the questions that I don't know the answers to. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't do that to me. Okay, so... Bookkeeping can be a very complex subject, but it doesn't have to be. So if it doesn't have to be complex, then why is it that we're saying you should hire a bookkeeper? First of all, I want to preface this whole thing with, if you love doing bookkeeping, do it. I mean, you know, it, there, there's definitely nothing saying that business owners can't do it on their own. I have met a few, not very many, but maybe like, 1% that are just like, I really like doing it. And I'm like, great, you should do it. Um, but I also, my preface that I wanted to say is that a business owner's time is gold, right? It's worth tens of thousands of dollars an hour in potential income. And so if you're spending those hours pulling your hair out, trying to figure out your bookkeeping or your IRS forms, it's not worth your time. It's not a good investment of your time. At that point, you hire a bookkeeper and have them spend the time on it, which is probably gonna be much less time. It's probably gonna be done accurately. It's probably gonna be done on time of when you need it for deadlines. And you are gonna be able to go out and make more money and build your business. So that's why you would hire a bookkeeper, right? It's not to say you can't do it on your own or that it's so complicated that only the CPAs with 10 million hours of you know, experience can do it. It's not that. Yes, there are things in bookkeeping that are complicated and unless you've learned them, um, you're not gonna do it right. So of course you want your books to be right, but that doesn't mean you can't learn it if you want to. Why would you want to if you have a business doing marketing or you're a doctor? You know, we have lots of clients, they are specialists in their field. You don't have to be also the lawyer and also the CPA and also the bookkeeper. So, you know, free up your time and go make some money. So it shouldn't be complicated. What makes bookkeeping complicated? Um, I guess the first thing that makes it complicated is the fact that there's uh, 
before we had computers and programs and all kinds of things like that, we had books, right? Ledgers, these big, giant, dusty books that people use to record all these, all of your transactions. And um, they were double entry. And that just means literally they were entered twice. So there is, for instance, the bank account that it comes out of and the category of what it's for. So those are two entries. Maybe you have um, one book that just has all of your categories and then you have one book that has all of your bank accounts, let's say, right? Or something like that. So there's always two entries being made for each transaction so that people could track it. Why they did it that way, I don't know, but I'm so used to it now that it works. So when you have a bookkeeping program, you have to know what the different types of accounts are and that's where it can get confusing. Um, you have to know whether they're balance sheet accounts, whether they're profit and loss accounts, and if you enter, if you create an account that's a balance sheet account and it should be on your profit and loss, your books are wrong. So that's where it can get complicated. You know, you have a loan, it goes on your balance sheet, you have an expense, it goes on your P&L, your profit and loss statement. So that's where it can get complicated. There just is things to know. Um, it shouldn't be complicated in that you should just be able to record all of the transactions and what they were for so that you can give that information to the IRS, file your taxes, and, you know, make money. So, um, you know, go off and make money on your own, save money on taxes. But unfortunately, it is complicated. So I am going to, for one night only, special tonight, give you guys some tips and tricks of how to keep your bookkeeping simple. Um, not to say you should have to do it yourself, but you can do it yourself. And not only, regardless of whether you're doing it yourself or having a bookkeeper do it, if you're having a bookkeeper do it, doing these things will make your bookkeeping cheaper because it's gonna take less time and be less complicated. So, let's get into it. All right, so first of all, as a business owner, you either have a sole proprietorship, an LLC, uh, an S corporation, or a C corporation. There's few other variations, but those are the main ones. If you have an LLC, and you haven't elected to be taxed as an S corporation, you are taxed as a sole proprietor. As a sole proprietor, your taxes get reported just with your personal tax return. It goes on what's called a Schedule C, your deductions for your business. So, but either way, whether you have an S corporation or a sole proprietorship and our uh, LLC or a C corporation, you're still tracking the same things. What your CPA does with them is a little different but I just want you to know that, that business expenses are business expenses. So we're gonna keep that simple. Um, and because business expenses are business expenses, if you own a business, whether it's any of those, even if it's like a small business and it's, um, you know, doesn't have a lot of revenue, things like that, you want a separate bank account. If you give a bookkeeper your books and you want them to sort through all of your groceries, your Amazon transactions, your restaurants, and some of them are business meetings and some of them aren't, and you paid for your kid's school, but you also put some marketing in there, how many hours is it gonna take to separate that out? A moment of silence for you to think about the pain that you go through every year to do that. Right, it takes a long ass time. If you had a business bank account, whether you're a tiny new business or whether you're a huge business, and when I say business bank account, guys, I don't mean you have to go out and get an EIN and open a business bank account. If you have a small business where it's your sole proprietorship and you don't have a separate EIN, that's fine. Just open a separate bank account, even if it's a personal account, and only use it for business. So now think about this. You have a small business, so you made $50,000, $70,000 of business revenue, and um, it's all in one bank account. And all of the expenses for that business are in one bank account. So your marketing expenses, your um, business auto expenses, your home office expenses, it's all in that one bank account. Now, you've got like, 10% of the amount of transactions to go through to do bookkeeping, and nobody will have to ask you if it's business or personal, because they'll already know everything in that account is business. You go through it, 
You organize it, you put it in categories, you're done. You don't have to look at every single time you went to the grocery store, whether it was, let me think of grocery stores around the world, Albertsons, Publix, Winn-Dixie, what, what did we have in LA? I don't know, probably the same stores. Uh, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's. I have clients all over the country. We have grocery stores everywhere. We don't need to know about your groceries because it's a personal expense. It's not tax deductible. So save yourself lots of time and money by using a business account or an account designated for business, even if it's a personal account. That is the number one thing that's going to make your bookkeeping simple. So um, what more can I say about that? Also, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them because if you're wondering if the way you're doing it is good or anything like that, feel free to type the question in. I will answer it for you right here and now. All right, so another reason that you want to have your books or your, your business bank account and your personal bank account separate, especially if you are a corporation, is something called the corporate veil. Ooh, it sounds really scary. Really, very simply, okay, I'm not a lawyer, but basically what it means is that you don't wanna be using your business account for personal expenses because if you were ever to get sued, a lawyer could say that it's not a separate entity this business corporation that you have because you're using it for personal expenses and therefore you lose the liability protection potentially that you had by opening an LLC or a corporation. So keep that in mind. There are very important reasons to keep it separate. Okay, so that is the number one thing, of course. Here's some more things. Um, automation. So now what do I mean by automation? Because I personally don't love the, you know, automated rules and stuff in QuickBooks Online. I know some people like them. I don't. Um, mostly just because they're really easy to break. And I've had clients um, come to me with really, really bad books and it's like, this says that I paid Joe Blow a $15,000 bonus. Why? Because there was a transaction on it that said payroll and somebody made a rule that all payroll was Joe Blow's bonus and it automatically went in there for several months and nobody noticed when they came to me. And I said, oh, it's because you have this rule. He said, well, I didn't make the rule, but the point is it's really easy to make the rule on accident because all you have to do is click okay when QuickBooks says, do you want this to be a rule? So I'm not gonna say that you can never use rules. I'm just gonna say they're really easy to set up incorrectly and they're really easy to break. For instance, if you no longer have that bank account, if it only works that way some of the time. So one thing you can do if you really want to use rules is set them up to not auto add, but just to show you what you know the rule is and then you can decide. But, so that's not an automation that I like to use. When it does get used, I feel that it takes more time. Another automation that people like to use that I think makes it take more time is when you connect your bookkeeping software to your um, specialized software like your inventory software or your 17 hats or your um, WePay, you know, things like that, it often creates many duplicate transactions and it gets really confusing in the books and sometimes it's easier not to use it that way. Uh, most of the time. I have a client, for instance, who has an industry-specific software. I have lots of clients who have industry-specific software, whether they're real estate investors. One of my clients does window tinting, and they have a specific software for window tinting where they keep track of all of their clients and their accounts receivable and all the invoices, and accounts receivable meaning what the clients owe them. Um, and when we tried to connect it to QuickBooks, it created so many duplicate entries that it took two to three times as much time. But in QuickBooks, if you already are keeping track of your accounts receivable and all these things somewhere else, there's no reason for it to also be in QuickBooks. So at that point, you can basically just use QuickBooks for tax purposes and not put in the client names and just have it show up as income. And that makes it simpler and makes it faster. So not all automation is good automation. But for instance, QuickBooks Online, if you went from using an Excel spreadsheet and adding everything every time you have an expense, adding it in manually, and you go from that to QuickBooks Online that connects to your bank account and downloads all the transactions automatically, that is an automation that 100% saves you so much time and money. 
even in QuickBooks Desktop, they do have some automations that you can use or, and pay for, like bank connections, things like that. But QuickBooks Online is set up that way. There's a lot of other softwares that are set up that way as well. I believe, um, well, I can't even remember what it's called. The tax one that you get for free if you sign up for Mint Builder, that one has a lot of automations in it as well. So there are automations that make things faster. And there's automations that make things slower. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you, um, whether you're doing the bookkeeping yourself or whether somebody else is doing the bookkeeping for you, you want to test it out and make sure that when it connects, you know, an app or a new automation or a new rule, even in QuickBooks Online, that it actually saves you time and doesn't add time. Automations can save you time or they can ruin your life. You're welcome. Okay, good. So what's another thing that um, will make bookkeeping simple? Um, okay, so performing regular financial checkups and reviews. That's a really good one because let's say you have an in-house bookkeeper. Let's say you're a bigger company, you have someone doing it in-house and they're your office manager. Maybe you taught them bookkeeping, maybe they learned bookkeeping and they think they're doing everything right. It's always a good idea to get another set of eyes on it, whether that's gonna be your CPA or whether that's gonna be a bookkeeping firm. We have a lot of clients that we go in quarterly and just review. Because then we're telling them, oh, hey, you know, um, this deposit got messed up. It didn't go in correctly. We don't want you to pay taxes on it twice or it's missing. Or um, you put this as a balance sheet account when it really should be a p and I recently saw a set of books where the income reviews are crucial. Exactly, 100%. I recently saw Celeste. This is so nice. Thank you for joining. Um, I recently saw a set of books where the income account was put on the balance sheet and it was a mess because when you looked at the profit and loss, it looked like they had absolutely no income and only expenses. And it looked like it was this total wrong disaster when really it took two and a half seconds to move the account from the balance sheet to the P&L, move it to the right kind of account, and then the income showed up. So it's really crucial to have a second set of eyes on it, to look at everything, make sure that it's perfect, you know, especially even for us internally, we have the bookkeeper will review their work, the lead bookkeeper will review the bookkeeper's work, and I'll spot check it as well. So we have lots of, set of sets of eyes because when you're the only one doing it, if you're doing something wrong, you might not know you're doing it wrong, right? Um, it seems normal to you or everything just, you're so used to seeing it that that way that you don't think maybe it's something we should go in and fix. So that's super important and it will simplify your bookkeeping because even just having a person you can ask questions to like, oh, hey, how do I enter this refund? Um, I got a extension on my loan and they didn't charge me interest for three months, but my uh, book show interest, how do I show that correctly? You know, I would say 75% of the transactions are super simple. And then there's that 10 to 25% that can get complicated and having someone to ask or someone to review it for you to make sure you did it right is, as Celeste says, crucial. Um, if you Google things and you don't have a basic knowledge, you're gonna get all kinds of answers and it's gonna be hard to know which one is right. So a bookkeeper, like if I Google something, I have the basic knowledge where I can know that that fits with everything else I know and that's the right answer. And I also know when the tax law has changed and so if that's a three year old answer that may or may not still be correct, things like that. So simplify your bookkeeping, have another set of eyes. It might not seem like it's simplifying it, but it 100% is. Okay, here's another thing, keeping records of business expenses. Um, yeah, so of course, when we do bookkeeping, we are keeping records of all your business expenses, but receipts. So obviously everything is going through your you know, bank account and your credit cards, so there are records, but let's say you ever got audited, which we never wanna have happen, but let's say you did, and you have a receipt, or you have a charge to Amazon and you said it's office expenses, okay. You can buy anything on Amazon. 
like, I don't know, maybe you can buy humans on Amazon. I don't want to test it, but you can literally buy anything on Amazon. So the IRS might ask you, what did you buy? So luckily with Amazon, you can go in and look and you can get your receipts. But what if it was a cash purchase and you said, oh, I think it was for meals. And so you put it to meals. If you don't have the receipt, you're not going to know. Speaking of meals, if you want to consider it a business meal, you have to be having a meal with a client, a potential client, um, an employee, and you need to write on the receipt who it was with because if you did ever get audited, we, the IRS, not we, the IRS is going to want to know how are you going to prove that's a business expense. If you go to dinner with your wife and um, your kids and you say, well, I'm going to call this a business expense, so let's like, oh, how was your income this week? It was great. Thanks, honey. If you do that, especially if you do it all the time, the IRS is going to know. That's obvious. You're just going to dinner and calling it a business expense. So we've done a whole nother webinar on what you can and can't deduct, and you want to keep that clean because you don't want any fraud. Either way, you don't want to not report things you should be reporting, and you don't want to report things you shouldn't be reporting. So both ways. You need to keep receipts for things. Um, you don't have to do anything with them. You don't have to enter them all in QuickBooks. You don't have to... Um, you know, do anything with them, just keep them in an envelope for the year, and then if you ever got audited, it's all there. Especially cash receipts, guys. If you use cash, you need a receipt because ATM is not a business expense. Okay, so that will keep your bookkeeping simple. It might not seem like it keeps it simple now, but it'll keep it simple in a few months or in a few years when someone asks you, what did you go to the ATM and take out $300 for? And you're like, there's no way you're going to remember. People don't remember what they took out on cash two weeks ago. Like, how are you going to remember in three years? Exactly. Keep receipts. That's going to simplify your entire life. Okay, what else? Um, monitoring your employees' hours with time tracking software. Okay, yeah, that is a really good one. That's on my list. I love how I get these lists given to me so I can just tell you guys all about the different things. Um, so if you have employees, there's a lot of different software you can use to track their hours. Um, how long do we need to keep receipts? Seven years. I do believe, I do believe that's how far back they can audit you, right? So just keep them in, a, in an envelope. You want to Google that for me and, uh, and check, but I do believe. Okay. So, um, Okay, I was talking about time tracking. So QuickBooks Online, for instance, if you're using it, has a, a built-in time tracking software called QuickBooks Time. It's pretty simple to use. They did change it recently. It's not as fun to use, as easy to use as what they had before, which was T-Sheets, but it's basically T-Sheets turned into QuickBooks Time. If you have a certain level of payroll, it comes with it for free. Um, it connects to your QuickBooks. It's easy to use. It's got clock in, clock out. It's got breaks. You can clock into different customers, different clients. You can set it up to clock in based on proximity. You know, so that'll keep it really simple when you're doing your invoicing or you're tracking your time. So that's something you definitely want to use. If you don't um, have QuickBooks payroll or you're not using that, you don't want to spend money on it if you're not paying for the more expensive payroll, there's also another one called Clockify. That one's pretty great. There's several different ones, but you definitely want it to be automated. It will save you tons of time. Another thing that will make your bookkeeping more simple, not up front, but at the end, is making sure that you understand the payroll laws for the state that your employee is in. If your employee is in California and you are in, okay, thank you, Celeste, seven years is the answer. Um, if you are in California, or sorry, your employee is in California and you are in Florida, you have to use the payroll laws for California for that employee. And there's a lot of laws. So you always need to find out when you hire a new employee, especially if you're doing a lot of uh, remote hiring, like a lot of companies are these days, what are the rules for that state? You have to get registered for that state. Celeste is going to do a webinar on this at some point on setting up payroll and going to tell you guys all the things you need to know about it. But for now, just keep in mind, you have to register with that state, you have to use the rules for that state, and then down the line, that'll make things simpler. You won't get a bunch of, you'll still get a bunch of annoying letters, but at least 
you'll be able to say, yeah, I already did that. Instead of like, oh my gosh, what's this? I didn't know about this. You research it up front. So going into something knowledgeable is very important. Um, what's another thing to look at? Accounts receivable. So when you invoice clients, and um, you, especially if you're using QuickBooks, but any software you're using, the accounts, the invoices have to be set up correctly. This is another thing where you have to know before you go, right? If you set up your invoices incorrectly where the income items go to the wrong place, it will mess up your entire profit and loss. So that's not to say that invoicing is hard, that's just to say that you wanna set it up correctly. Make sure that it's mapped correctly to the correct income item so it shows up correctly on your profit and loss. That's very important. Um, because that'll make your setting things up correctly makes everything better later. You know, make sure your sales tax items are set up correctly on the invoice, all of that stuff. So when you get to the end of the year, you're not like, why does this all not make sense? If you're using invoicing, for instance, in QuickBooks, there's a, a workflow you have to use. It's invoice, payment, and then deposit, and they all match up. And if the deposit doesn't match a payment, it's going to be very confusing. If the you know, if there's no invoice, it's going to be very confusing. So you have to use the correct workflow. Invoice, payment, deposit. They all have to get entered in. You can't enter in only one or only two. It has to be all three for it to make sense. Um, and you can always run reports. So if you run a profit and loss, or, or sorry, you run an accounts receivable report, meaning what you're owed, then you can go through, you can follow up with your clients, you can collect the money, you can also see if any of it's incorrect, like sometimes things get entered incorrectly, and again, your bookkeeper can fix it, or you can ask for help, or you can research it, but things have to be entered correctly, and as long as you're reviewing these things, it'll keep your bookkeeping simple. If you wait for two years and come to us, then it could take 20 to 50 hours to fix it all, so you wanna make sure you do it right from the beginning. Everything is fixable, and especially in QuickBooks, everything is fixable, but it takes three times as long to fix it as doing it right in the first place. So you wanna to try to set it up correctly and do it right in the first place so that you're getting the results that you want. So you can, you're getting the reports that you want and they're accurate. Okay, so that are those, that's pretty much what I have to say on keeping bookkeeping simple. Um, if anybody has any questions for me, please feel free to reach out. You can put a comment here. You can email me. You can reach out to me um, on Facebook Messenger. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Maya Wine Rep, or Solvency Now Bookkeeping. There's also, you can go to my website. It's solvencynow.com. And you can email me, maya at solvencynow.com, and we can answer any questions. No matter what size your business is, we can help you whether we're doing a consultation for you um, to teach you how to use QuickBooks or whether you have a huge company and you just want us to come in and review your books every quarter so that everything is accurate and you have a second set of eyes. We are here to help. So like I said, reach out. And um, my mission statement is perfect and complete financial records for your peace of mind. So that is what I want for you this evening peace of mind through this tax season. I hope that you're getting all the help that you need. And if you're not, reach out to me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I'll see you next time on The Bottom Line Live.